I'm not evil and I'm not an occultist, but I'm gonna add dark shade to this video so the red they add on my lips in the videos and so on and so forth doesn't make it so I look weird. Anyway, um, first of all, I want you to ask yourself these questions. Are all people born with the same money, height, weight, physical ability, ill-gotten gains, privilege? Does society historically sabotage heroes while evil people pretend to be successful in truth? Are the education systems made to favor all people or are they made to favor people that think a certain type of way? Right? We see in um, colleges, we see frats and sororities, we see nerds tend to behave a certain way, we see doctors, you know, you talk about professional and they, they tend to think a certain way and have certain habits. The schools are for them, by them. There's been a lot of research done in this area and they figured it, they figured out it's, it's the case. Some people learn better with oral presentations, some with videos, some with reading and writing, some with certain types of teaching styles and so on and so forth. So what does it profit a man to be evil in exchange um, for material wealth and social status? Well, I would say they are just deluded idiots and the morally precise hero is greater than all others. Okay, even if they sabotage him, especially if they sabotage him. All right, so with this being said, let me now prove it definitively, okay? So number one, superior has the same kind of prefix or whatever it's called as the words superman, supernatural, superhuman. But of course, I don't fly through the air. I don't turn water into wine. I'm not, you know, I don't have x-ray vision, so on and so forth. Um, and I refer to natural supremacy, which is moral supremacy. I use the play on words for morality, meaning more reality, right? To be good is to live in reality. You know, they talk about being criminally insane and criminals are stupid and they go into fugue and fugitive, fugue state of mind, like a fog. Think about a, a mental fog. They slip into a fugitive state of mind and there's a spectrum uh, and there, there are var variations of this state of mind. It's like you do something wrong. They say, hey, did you do something wrong? I go, oh, uh, no, no, it wasn't. You know, they kind of, they start acting weird, especially when called out because they're in a fugue state of mind, like a fugitive, okay? I'll make sure you understand that. So people that are not moral do not live in reality. They are narcissistic and animal-like with no wisdom or understanding, okay? So... One of my key points is that the righteous man is greater than the wicked man. The guy who's trying to trick you into bed, who's a player, is inferior to the guy who wants to bring you true, morally precise love. The guy who wants to rape you, the guy who teams up with people and goes, so what? She's a bitch. Who cares? Is inferior to the morally precise man. Point number three. Playing stupid about evil in the world is an inferior path. And the repetition of this cultivates being inferior. For example, if you don't go to the gym and work out at all, you sit on the couch eating Twinkies, you're going to get out of shape unless you have a certain physiology and metabolism, so on and so forth. But you get what I mean, okay? So you have to go out every day and be moral and be righteous and be just or else people uh, who are moral and righteous and just will surpass you. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, give credit where it's due right? The righteous man is above the wicked man. This is why there's a Martin Luther King day. There's not a Marilyn Manson day. There's not a day for the average person walking down the street either, because it's already conceded to some degree in society that the righteous man is superior to the average man and to the wicked man. Okay. So as Martin Luther King said, to judge people by the content of their character, which goes back to my point of moral supremacy. Now I'm mixed black and white, I'm not racist, so on and so forth. This just happens to be the most effective example to use. Presidents uh, in presidents days, they, they used their privilege to become presidents. They didn't use moral and character and they didn't do anything that great. So I, I would also refer to these, these terms, I want you to write down these terms so you understand why I'm right. Universal pinpointing moral precision, uh, something we can all agree is moral, right? It's moral to insist on moral precision for society and not corporate greed, for example. I'm sure everyone from every faith and every walk of life can agree. Focus, moral intensity, moral might, okay? 
moral will, moral excellence, right? Moral courage, right? Moral excellence. Thank you.